So are we looking at the Giannis ban and a Chuck change, or would just removing Giannis potentially allow Chuck to be more useful? I think you don't have to get rid of Giannis. You just have to be more mindful about your positioning. Okay. Maybe be more trigger happy with your sanctuary if you see that on state if you see that through space and time coming your way. Uh, but yes, the chalk pick definitely has to be cleaned up a little bit. Also, Giliara struggled a little bit early on against Fine OK. Uh, pick gods in the jungle and soul lane for first rounders, that's not going to get invaded on. And that's Astral Authority, let's look at their comp. I mean, for the most part, Astral Authority should probably do what they just did. Yes. For all intents and purposes. Early game, even. Broke, don't fix it. Then work on things in the mid game once again, like they did that game. The composition seems to come together quite nicely. A little bit risky with Kamazots and Ratatoska in those positions, but Left Syndrome and Shaker really made things happen for them. Also, it was famous hate on the soul. We actually saw the five on four power play mm. where it was first rounders pushing down that tier one mid tower. It was famous hate that threw out that supernova that found Quig in the process, preventing the siege with a raw sustain. So. Famous Hate kept his team alive in the early game. Well, 1-0 to Astral Authority. Let's go into picks and bans for game two then and see if we can see a turnaround for first rounders here. They will be first pick, first ban this time round though, so they've got a few opportunities for themselves to try and get more priority picks. We saw Ratatoska prioritized by Astral Authority earlier. Giannis was definitely the problem. Instead of wanting to worry about being so focused to avoid the through space and time, they're just going to eliminate it from this game entirely. But do you want to really do that though? I mean, you could have left it open drafted it for yourself, I guess, but is that too risky to it just seems that they had developed a different strategy where maybe potentially mm. Quig didn't want to play Giannis. He'd rather be comfortable on the Raw. Because to be fair, the Raw, despite him struggling a little bit because of the rotations from Final K, he was still in a good spot getting off some clutch snipes. And still, that sustain is so important in Smite. Yeah, we really look at the sustain in that, but Astral Authority respecting that as well. So they're going to ban out the Raw themselves. Sylvanas is available right now. He has been one of the big go-tos, but so is Nike right now and it's available and it will get locked in for first rounders we could see a lot of action early on just to be able to get those passive stacks like we mentioned before yeah but not necessarily like you don't have to get them straight away they will develop as the game goes on anyway because you will eventually hit those passives sylvanas picked up by astral authority though do we see this being paired with zeus maybe it very well could be. You want to try to synergize with this huge area of effect control with even more so. We could see a Poseidon, potentially Poseidon rather, but like you mentioned before, if you see Sylvanas, you're generally thinking of Zeus to complement it. Especially when Ra and Giannis are banned too. That's kind of way I always seem to see Zeus get picked up is when Ra and Giannis are out of the equation as well. And you've got the Sylvanas for the extra. Well, hang on a second. We could root them in place and double tap them with lightning bolts as you well. You can even have Scylla for the double root potentially even Good more point. confirmed damage. Just uh, complement it with a huge mm. burst god. But you're picking the Zeus. You don't have an escape. Odin to capitalize off of it. It might even force Astral Authority into a Phantom, which is not ideal if you're a, a support because you're not going to pick that up to level 12. That's going to take a while. And then that's one less team fight relic for your team. Well, the thing is, first round is here going to put a ring on it with the Odin and Poseidon pick as well, allowed to confirm with the Kraken. The only problem I see for them, though, is where that Odin's going to go now that Nike's going to be in the solo lane, because that's where we see Odin a little bit more. He has supported before and he has jungle before, but. Will he go in? Which role is he going to go in? Honestly, that's really good flex pick opportunities for first rounders between Nike and Odin. Nike has been shown in, in the, the jungle, jungle before. Right. Odin could be played in three different positions if he wants to between support, jungle, and solo. Mm -hmm. So you never really know with first rounders. Astral Authority with the next pick after the bans has to be so mindful about making sure that whatever their next two gods are will be able to handle both Odin and Nike in those flex positions. Astral Authority still respecting the Hun Bats here though with that ban from them because they don't want to see Odin, Nike, and a Honbats. Very, very big AoE ultimates from all these, from the whole of first rounders there. And Honbats would really allow them to spread the difference if they need to. So they are going to respect that just in case Odin is a support. It's a lot of disruption if Honbats was available for first rounders to take. So it's not something that Astral Authority wanted to necessarily grab for themselves because they're looking for maybe some kind of a split push backdoor potential. Now keep in mind, with Zeus on the table and Soul, if those kitties get dropped on any sort of objective, that was magical damage hunters and the mage will just shred that objective very very melee heavy team from first rounders here nike odin and now erlang shen drafted for the first rounders here they're gonna need some help on the back line i want to say as i look through this squad because i feel like poseidon and freya are gonna have to self peel for themselves all day especially when kitty cat is gonna be looking at the back line the whole time i would like to see erlang shen being played in that solo lane because he's one of the best bully gods currently in the smite meta to be able to almost manhandle any sort of matchup entirely so we might see potentially Odin in the support role, Nike in the jungle, but it's going to be Bologna 
being played in that solo role for Astral Authority. And when you look at the below the matchup against the three there, I mean, which one's the one she's going to struggle with the most, would you say? I would say that she would definitely struggle against Erlang Shen for the most part because she's going to get knocked up by mm. the turtle from Erlang Shen as long as he positions it correctly. Every time the bludgeon connects, that's going to get disrupted. Whereas Odin and Nike don't have the same options. Obviously, Nike can knock you up with her jump. That's right. But it takes a long time to land from that jump. By the time she gets back on the ground, that bludgeon's complete. Well, it is going to be Erlang Shen played by iFates in the solo lane. Giliara will be play taking that Nike to the jungle. We've not seen massive amounts of Nike jungle. The first time we really saw it was the World Championships, where we saw Obey with the big predominators of actually doing that over and over again. Yes, the scrims between Obey and Energy shows just how powerful Nike was, whether it was solo or the jungle with Faith though they could see a potential collapse here as Giliara and Benny Q th was thinking about going up north but instead both teams are just kind of feeling each other out just dropping the wards where they want them yeah and you can see the chase is on there from iFace looking to make sure Left Syndrome gets out of his half of the jungle as well similar dance to the beginning of the last game though but the war coverage definitely first round is who've placed most of them here inside both left and right harpies pretty much and then towards the red and speed buff just to see who goes where I guess more than it's anything else a big else. commitment to be able to drop this many wards it might hurt your build in the long run. It also could hurt your laning phase if you don't have that one or two extra potions to keep your sustain up and running. Kind of balanced out, though, because you can see three wards were placed by Astral Authority there. One right in mid lane, one over towards the speed buff, and one at the fire giant pit as well. So interesting trades between the two there. But it's going to be support starting off with things on the left-hand side, knowing he's with a frame and Poseidon. They do need a little bit of help in the jungle at the start. Wrath available for both of these soul laners. We see a little bit of a disparity, though, as Mango used his right off the bat. A little bit of a delay delay for fates on his side so we could potentially see that come into play it's about a 10 second window and smite is all about a game of seconds interesting choice there with the curse being picked up straight away there by genocide on the support ode in this game it will help him against the sylvanas and to actually just slow the movement speed down of a lot of players but that shell is so so important for the all-in combos that can come into play especially when they have shaker playing that zeus the problem for astral authority is the fact that they don't have too many escapes between the zeus sylvanas and soul so if you catch them with that curse they're going to be moving like a snail speed and without a sprint on the side of astral authority to negate the effects of curse this is going to make it a lot easier for first rounds to maybe find some early kills true indeed i do feel both teams actually may need a sprint here obviously dealing with kitty cats and the slows from chain lightning going to be an impact for first round if want to pick one up at the same time as you said astral authority they have to respect the amount of slows that'll come out both teams rotating for their back right side harpies electing to farm it up two magical hunters the Freya versus the soul obviously famous hate will get the better end of this for now as the stellar burst will outshine the second ability coming out of Freya because she doesn't really have the attack speed to keep it running. Famous Hate though, feeding off the confidence of last game and the performance there when he did go, when the Q went aggressive against him earlier on. Obviously, playing a Freya this time round, a little bit more farm orientated at the start of the game for both, both the mages. And something we haven't mentioned was Mango going the Bologna not only helps him a little bit in this matchup against Space because he could potentially box him down, but later on as the game progresses, that Scourge is going to be so impactful against the Freya, just mitigating it by two seconds yeah with the duration versus the duration of six that's basically cutting her dps by 33 percent and not only that but mango as well with the eagles rally can get to the back line to the likes of quig if he gets trapped inside the ring being able to reposition himself out of a dangerous situation or just initiate in the back line and make sure they can't do damage i'm very worried for the first round is back line here quig and benny q of any peel they're going to get because their car their carries their defenders are more front line orientated both solo side laners at this point in time from first round is getting bullied constantly under their tower. They're losing a lot of gold in the process. And now Mango, he has more sustain as long as he keeps the Scourge running with the Death Toll as well. Should be able to out-sustain Fates in the process. Looking at the potion situation though, Mango with no more. Yeah, just a only potion left there for I Fates as the right and Harpies, sorry, right Elementals are contested over for the time being. No kills just yet though. Not really surprised with how this one's going to be played out. It's a very tense situation for both these teams. They both need to find the win here. It's about a 600 goal lead already for Astral Authority because of just the pressure between those side lanes, uh, the Soul versus Freya matchup and then Bologna versus the Arlong Shen. 
And Man we'll... fight in the left hand side here. Aegis used by Famous Hate though to absorb the damage coming out from Benicu's ultimate. And at the same time now, there could be a chance here for Benicu to be initiated on now because the team should be told of Astral Authority that the ultimate is on cooldown. Benicu wanted to get off some damage just to be able to control the laning phase a little bit better. Obviously, if you poke out Famous Hate, there is some kill potential there in the process. But now, you don't have a defensive mechanism to get out of danger if the rotation from Final K happens. It's very difficult to be able to get away from a bad do you like the call from Famous Hate there to go for the Aegis at the start of the game here, the Sanctuary for all intents and purposes, because of the fact that he's going to be able to get a lot of burst damage overall. He's not too worried about being CC'd. He's got Disapparate as well. If he does get into a chain CC situation, it's more about being stuck in the ring, being hit by Krakens, being hit by the Valkyrie's discretion. The only thing he has to worry about is obviously the rotation from Fates, but that's not going to happen for a long time anyway, so it's a very safe option. Obviously, the knockout from Giliara could play a role, but it's very slow slow knockup. It's not going to be the burst unless he uses his second ability to amplify to yep. make it a quick one, but then he sacrifices some damage. Still trading off these two Fates. Pops his ultimate very early. They're looking for the sustain more than anything else. Still getting hit by the minions at the same time. And Mango's bludgeon is good and Fates realizes he's made a mistake now. He was looking to turtle form there, but the beat down with a shield and sword. Mango first blood solos, I think. This is the problem though, because during that boxing encounter, there was only Boots 1 available for Fates, mm. whereas the Warrior Tabby was completed for a Mango so this is why he got that solo kill. However, though, Astral Authority utilizing the kitties, the soul, you and this the earlier, Zeus totally. right off the bat. That's all you have to do. And now, however, we may see the man fall down there, fine, okay. But unfortunately, Valkyrie's discretion missing there. Benicu looking to trade with Shaker, but Shaker pops his ult in response as well. Quig's on the way with the Poseidon, looking for a crack, and Shaker realizing that the whole world of hurt. Sanctuary already used, and the ring is on it right now. Shaker falls down, still trapped inside his left syndrome, looking to tank up as much as he can. But he's still going to fall down too here, and it's Benny Q that gets the kill, even though the Kraken was there more for Flair than anything else. And that's all they really need to do. If you're not going to get the gold through the process, at least find some kills. Famous, hey, he wants Benny Q greedy, so badly. Disapparate is on cooldown. Meanwhile, Mango will pick up Genocide on a rotation for himself as well. Famous will not manage to find Benny Q, who slips away to safety, but find OK now looking to chase onto Quig and onto Giliara, who are going to get back to the safety of their own half a map. And Mango's not Mango. done yet, though. He's going to dash in. He's going to find the bludgeon, but the Sanctuary preventing a lot of that damage. He Great goes Eagles rally, the rally. One more in hand. That's all was needed. And in comes Bastet as well, but the Sanctuary will absorb some of that damage on Giliara. Round the corner comes Ifates now, looking to turn this around, but two full health targets up against him. He won't really be able to find a kill here at the time being, but he can try and defend the boards. With Benicu coming in, though, they could turn this on fine, okay? Sanctuary buying him a little bit of time at the process. Still waiting on the jump. The Wolf is going to deter Mango from continuing any sort of aggression. Genocide, he wanted the kill, but fine, okay, going behind the goal. Fury face. he needs to find this Javelin toss. Just as a heads up, fine, okay, was dead there. Even if he dies here, it's still fine. Fates wants to kill. The kiddies are dropped, and it's Fates that got baited into a bad spot. But my credit there goes to left syndrome who nobody saw there. Genocide was about to bird bomb in on the Odin, and he managed to pick off the Odin and stun him in place, well, I believe with a route to stop the leap being able to be performed. Mango made the rotation, and he finds every single kill in yep. the process. He's now sitting at 4-0. His net worth is the highest of the game. He's sitting at about a 1,200 goal lead over his opposition high fades. And once this goes back into the laning phase for him, he's almost done with Breastplate of Valor, whereas we see Erlang Shen going to go into more of the Witchblade style. It's not going to help his case because at this point, the Bologna with a two-level lead is mm. just going to be a bigger bully. And this Bologna as well, for all intents and purposes, I love the idea from Astral Authority here to sit back and leave it for last pick. This is one of the reasons we see Solon Lennon's last pick, four matchup dependent. And Bologna was the right thing, as you said, for multiple reasons up against this team. Benny Q, he can use the Scourge to disarm to reduce some of the damage down. Hold that for Shake is in a bit of trouble here. The Kraken, though, there is no Sanctuary. Easy clean kill in that cage, but Quig might have been overexposed as the rotation from Final K, but now Mango on the bottom hand. Don't think he really wanted the kill there, but he'll get credit for it with the Eagles. Rally Final K trying to buy a moment or two to try and bot get body block from Mango to keep alive. Bird Bomb hits, but Final K still stands. The Wisps are into play too, giving him protection to sustain, but I face will pick him up as Mango gets himself a second kill in that engagement, making him six and oh. 100% kill participation and 100% kills for his team. Two for two in the process. Not done yet though. Fates though, knocking up 
the Bologna during the bludgeon, not able to really find that one, unless the pull is good, but instead electing to farm up the minion wave in the process. This is what you want to do whenever you have some downtime. Find the minions, keep on rotating. Get away middle, get away solo. Great pull coming out from left syndrome, but Face is going to use the turtle form to buy him a moment's time. Pin onto Mango to get back to the tower. He's one hit from death, but he will survive through the damage. Someone who might not survive is Benny Q. Three stacks on him, eats the detonate, but it wasn't enough for the kill. Benny with a quick 180 and a whoop means Shaker won't be able to kill him. That was a perfect purification because he also prevented himself from getting slowed from famous hate stellar burst. Oh, nice job by being able to utilize the Poseidon's long range just to maximize the clear. Anytime you could do that and being grouped up, this is what you want to do. Clear your jungle camps as quickly as possible. Get back to the laning phase, get the wave, and push down these towers. Pace is definitely a lot further along than it was in the previous game here. I guess with three warriors on the side of first rounders, though, you'd expect that. And at the same time, Astral Authority technically on a clock here. And by on a clock, we're looking towards Benny Q. He's playing a Freya, super late game hyper carry. And when Benny Q comes online is when Astral Authority he might start to have issues. It might be a while though for Benny Q to come online because I'm rethinking the draft here from first rounders. There's not that much protection and peel for this Freya or the Poseidon. This is a purely offensive composition coming out of first rounders. This, this is like a kill or be killed composition. And right now you can see the elementals are going to be contested here. Giliara is in a good position. Level 9 right now on Giliara, keeping pace. We fine okay on night last game, so that's one of the issues we did see develop in the last one, where the junglers were a little bit mismatched. But talking about mismatching now, in the solo lane, Mango is having a whale of a time. The four-minute golf here is about to respawn from earlier on. Only 10 more seconds on that one. They have the timer for both teams, but we could see more pressure from Astral Authority. Like we mentioned before, those kitties are so detrimental to starting up the golf here for the tanking, as as long as you have Famous Hate and Shaka in the process, you will melt that gold. And it's an important goal for you, this one as well. This is going to be an escalation in favor of Astral Authority, but you heard the cries then that one of the passives has kicked him from Nike now as well. So a little bit of boon here for first rounders. It's going to have the minions passive stacks. All they need to do is find six more kills, but Benny Q having to run away. Famous Hate doing a good job pulling out this Freya. And this is just another tactic that you can utilize for your team to get a little bit more jungle control now because obviously with Benny Q being this low, you cannot enter the jungle at less than 50% health on a level 11 Freya. So therefore, this could allow Famous Hate to start rotating towards middle and maybe even starting up the gold. Love the way Famous Hate played that with a supernova though. That paint of the ultimate there was in the right position, expecting which path Benny Q was trying to run. Cover the option, get more damage off here. It forced Freya back to base for a moment. Obviously, didn't find the kill they were looking for, but denying experience is key if they can. It's all about the little things, anything that you can get away with without giving anything back in return. So off of the pressure, sure that Famous Hate applied to Benny Q, losing some gold from the melee minions under the tower. At least enough. Less Syndrome here on the Sylvan is going to be engaged on. A lot of pressure. Ults early, but then eats a Kraken straight after. Syndrome still alive, though, with Shaker coming on the Zeus. Giliara dives in deep to pick up Left Syndrome, but there's so many members of first rounders here. Shaker's in trouble. Nobody from National Authority really to clean up. That's two members dead already. Shaker Big being play. taken advantage of by Benny Q. Where was everybody from Astral Authority? Not in position, but now Mango making the rotation, gonna get taunted out of the bludgeon, and that's not really good because everybody is here that's remaining at least from Master Authority to maybe start up this gold. The kitties are available as well as the wrath from Mango. Yeah, so a bit surprising first round has fell back after finding two players, but now the gold view is getting very low right now. Oh. A banish will force a reset though, very well played by Benny Q. However, Mango pulls it again, it's a 3v5. This is risky for Master Authority very to hang risky. around. They wanted to be able to sneak that gold fear with those two mechanics, but great move is going to stop Igiliara, forced to retreat defensively. Now Genocide utilizing the shield. He might look for a jump. Fine, okay. Going aggressive. Out on the backside again. The Sanctuary buys him a moment's notice, but he still gets picked up by Benny Q in the Valkyrie's discretion. Mango is back in the fight, though, and he's going to pick up Quig straight to the bat line with him. With Syndrome alongside them now on that Sylvanas, he can start to sustain them back up. And now reinforcements of Shaker coming back. First rounders gave a window to Astral Authority after picking up two kills, and they may lose the gold off this as well. Wrath is a Available for both soul laners. You have to respect face being able to potentially steal this and mango and this is why he's going aggressively. He wants to be able to bully him out. The ultimate coming out from left central butt. Genocide another one. Giliara gonna fall by famous hate. And Genocide and Iface have to walk away. Fate's completely out of mana. It means the goal for you. He goes the way of Astral Authority for a moment. First round is almost even things up. But they decided to fall back after picking up kills and allowed Astral Authority into position that turns into a goal fury and a couple of kills to even things out once so more. Now this goal 
goal lead is going to be snowballing a little bit. About a 3,500 goal lead on the side of Astral Authority. Experience slightly to match it. We see in the left-hand side, Famous Hate taking a lot of poke. Dangerous trade from but Famous Hate, eight. but he had backup coming in and Disapparate avoids the banish. Banish on cooldown means Benek using more trouble. No ultimate available. Eagles rally round the back to cut the option off. Good pull from Syndra. We will see Benek tumble down there for a free pick after Famous Hate did a good job of bait. There is never any more 1v1s in Smite any longer. You have to respect any sort of rotation to come your way. If you don't have your Valkyrie's discussion to be able to get out of dodge, oh. then you're going to get punished for it. Just like Quick got punished there, trying to contest those right side mid harpies in a qu quote unquote 1v1 against Shaker. And when you look at the comp, look at the comp of first round is three warriors that aren't, for the most part, defensively mindset here. They all want to dive in deep. And then that means that nobody can really peel for them. There's no Geb to shield people this time as you get aggressed on. There's no Sylvanas to sustain them or peel them away from this. They went with aggression three warriors, and that can cause problems. However, it's also going to create a lot of threats. We saw in the mid lane, Shaker was afraid of that Odin cage coming out, so he instantly dropped his own ultimate just for defensive purposes, making sure that Giliara wasn't going to jump on top of himself as well. So this is going to deter any sort of aggression for first round. They're still not able to get that second Nike passive stack. Well, keep an eye on power spikes here. The second relics are starting to come through for both teams. Fates, though, under pressure from two, forced to ultimate early on. The sustain will heal him back up decently, but he's still got a full minion wave, and Fates is still trying to fight because he knows he's got Genocide coming in back up. But Final K jumps away with a pounce and Genocide will just have to walk away. Giliar is around the corner in case the action continues. That's going to allow Shaker though in the mid lane to continue on the left. Sudo taking a little bit of poke, but the sustain is going to be fine for now. The Poseidon's only level 11. Fire Giant was aggroed there for a second too, reducing a little bit of damage. Syndrome is fi quite happy to be in this fight now. And it's Fates who's in a world of hurt. Surrounded by the whole team of Astral Authority. Shaker gets credit for the kill there. Fates couldn't get out of the situation. And now Final K can start to push them back further. Famous All members Hater. of Astral Authority grouping up. Famous Hate has made the rotation in the mid lane. This is going to be a five on four process. Mango is looking for a flank potentially in the bottom hand side just to apply some pressure to allow the rest of his team to get that tier one tower. But Final K is going to force out the Valkyrie's discretion and utilizing the Eagles rally from Mango helps shake and secure a kill. Benny Q will survive. Tier one tower down. Tier two tower now being looked at as well. And the Wisps is keeping everybody topped off from Astral Authority to continue the siege under the tier two tower already 15 minutes into the game getting about a 7,000 gold lead is a lot better of a pace than they did in the first game final k is going to force out the sanctuary out of this level 12 poseidon i'll say astral authority walked into in memory of gabe's team last week in the earlier rounds and that's why we didn't see them get towards the finals but this week they beat cope's team in the finals last week they're looking at the first round is now looking to put them to bed and give themselves a final for the first time right it's going to be very difficult for first rounders here astral authority it looks like they're running away with this they got the two goal furies of the game they're getting every single tower they're not giving anything back in return all yep. the towers of their own are very healthy right now currently level 16 onto mango grabbing seven of the 12 kills almost Almost having 100% kill participation with four assists. Just one off here. Fates, though, in the mid lane, going to try and apply some pressure to the tier one tower here. Chip it away, get some global gold back in the side of first round. Nice. here. The route was good, but I don't think he's going to be able to get the tower before he sees all the army of Astral Authority running down the mid lane. He's like, nope, going to have to give that up. Just there. not having the itemization quite yet. If that was a finished executioner or even a chin size, that tower was guaranteed gone at this point. This is why we see such a disparity in the gold and experiences. It's just Astra Authority been able to hold on to all of their structures in the process. They haven't been able to lose any of their buffs as well. For now, though, it's going to be a rough, rough situation for first rounders because on tower defense, they don't really have massive amounts of clear, I want to say, in terms of safe clear that you'd like to see out of a lot of them. Even Freya, for example, has to be quite far forward to be able to fire off those pulses and clear this wave. Whereas Famous Hate playing the soul is a lot different in that scenario, whereas he relying on the heat, giving him the magical power, giving him the attack speed that he really needs to be yeah. able to melt these towers and left unchecked on the left hand side, that tower could go down. Quite potentially, but Benicu's now over on that left to defend it for the time being here. And talking about Astral Authority a little bit more, their poke under a team, under a tower, is very strong with a Sol and a Zeus on the team. And then you've got a Bastet that can come in, but Benicu got baited again a little bit. Famous Hate going to avoid the damage with the Aegis. Shaker's going to cut off the option with the ultimate of where to escape from. And the two ultimates combine means Astral Authority are Captain Planet right I now. Fates in trouble. 
I love it. Fates, though, might be in a little bit of trouble, but the Kraken coming out, doing a lot of damage already, but keeping everybody topped off. Final K is going to take a spill. So far, it's been a two for one as Fates going to spill. It's going to be a two for two if Left Syndrome falls, but the Wisp was keeping him topped off for a little bit. Finally falling, though, three for two. First rounders finally finding something. They don't hold on to their tier one tower on the left, though. Um, it's not enough, though, realistically. I love what Quig is doing. Every time I seem to see Quig with these ultimates, they are good ultimates for all intents and purposes. Fired at the right times. There's just not been enough damage on this team. And I guess that's the next turning point now. Lack of damage. I think that's one of the reasons we see Fate has gone for a very aggressive build here. You also see in the jungle, like, a little bit more damage coming out from the likes of the Nike as well. Trying to utilize a little bit more damage overall. That's what they're lacking here. It's a level 14 Poseidon that has Shoes of Focus with Spear of the Magus finally being complete now. So this is why we see a little bit of lack of damage, whereas Shaker playing the Zeus. Granted, he doesn't have that much of an offensive build, not finishing off that Obsidian Shard, but he's level 17. And those levels is going to be able to give him those base stats and just the abilities to be able to out damage Quake in the process. Now, that last team fight not only was it important for first rounders to keep holding on to the game, but... Mm. They're at the 10 kill mark, which gives them that Nike second passive to be able to get extra power, extra movement speed. And that's why this goal here is so important for both teams. Astral Authority could, for all intents and purposes, put this game to bed if they can get it. But first rounders could get themselves really back into the game with it. Benny Q, though, well, forced to Valkyrie's discretion very, very early on in that engagement. And now he's on the run from Mango. Janosan might have to ulti defensively, but it looks like they're going to be able to get away on the right hand side, though. Bastet is split pushing. Yep. Fine, okay. Utilizing the. This is two wins here for Rational Authority. Big top from Fates though into a big old bird bomb, but it's not a whole lot of damage. The ring is dropped down on four members as a Kraken hits four members too. However, Famous Hate did pick up one. Quick gets a double kill out of this. Meanwhile, Bastet did pick up the tier two tower on the right-hand side. And now Mango is running for his life now as the Whirlpool causes an issue. And it's a support war in the dual lane right now. I don't see either of these falling down. No, not at all. Genocide could potentially look for more slows, chasing? but nobody else is really on his he can't team. Kill him. The tower on the left-hand side should keep up the Sylvanas alive. Overall, it was a three for one in the process. It's up to Final K to try to defend this tier two tower. Looks like he is able to pick off Giliara. Yeah, it looks like first round is just not communicating very well on what the call should be. I can kind of understand why Genocide is sticking to left syndrome to keep him in combat so he can't fall back to base and defend. But at the same time, he's got himself in an awkward spot. He lost the trade against left syndrome now and now Final K is on the rotation on a Bastet. I think we're going to see Odin fall here next as well. It was a bait into a counter bait and Final K is doing the loop de loop all the way around the blink is going to force out the counter blink great place from both supports for the most part i mean the goal fury still stands so and that's the big thing here i guess overall but first round is did close a bit of a gap there with that engagement it was a good mindset i would say to try to look for that offensive blink but the mind presence from genocide to oh, be able no. to still use that defensively and with this rotation now from mango final k and left syndrome started it up and with shaker here to clean it up nobody in position from first I gotta, rounders i gotta look at i face and i've got to look at quick there they were on the right hand side of the map doing a speed buff when the goal fury was still a threat whether they felt they couldn't contest it there okay but i guess you should show some sort of presence around that goal fury you can't just let it away for free after doing all that work in the last engagement and with that third goal fury going in the wave astral authority eight thousand goal lead about seven 7,500 experience. They're still doing a good job in these team fights, being able to get in and out, utilizing the sustain from left syndrome. The only thing they have to really worry about is all getting trapped under that Odin cage yep. because we saw what that Kraken did in that last team For fight. sure, and that was a lot of work coming out from Genocide and quick to make that happen. But now the Fire Giant is locked up by Astral Authority. Fine OK is bit off a little bit more than he can chew there. Forced to pounce away. Bird Bomb doesn't really find a proper home in terms of damage. And Fine OK has been forced to use the Kitty Cats. Torn it in though from Fates. But there is a big old ultimate coming through. And that Kraken only hit fine okay, who is at 10% anyway. Overall, it's a one-on-one -on -one forced into the sanctuary. It's quick though. He's gonna get chased down. Mango has the frostbound hammer. He just needs to find one in hand, but with genocide being that low, the wrath stun is gonna be able to keep him in place for a little bit longer. The slow from Giliara is gonna him fall up. down to in hands from Shaker more than likely any second there. Into this guy goes Benny Q with the Valkyrie's discretion, but he doesn't really deter Astral Authority from continuing to march on here for the time being. Two for one, favoring Astral Authority. They could rotate to the Fire Giant, but without the Wrath, without the Kitties to be able to tank the Fire Giant, it's not really worth it to put themselves that far out of position. They're just going to continue to group up and maybe look for more picks or more towers, but there's really no more towers in the middle or right-hand side. So instead, 
they're just going to continue to look for baits. Two members starting the fire giant right now of Astral Authority. Shaker's the last man here, but he's getting engaged because he didn't recognize his position. Shaker's in a world of hurt, forced to age his back to safety of famous hate. Fire giant forced to be reset as well. Left syndrome going to keep up Shaker a little bit with a sustained face. He wanted Pace to jump, and he's going to die right away. He revived into death. Benny Q going to at least find a little bit of redemption, Ooh, but the, what a pull pull. the pull finds Benny Q. Beautiful pull coming out there as well from left syndrome. Turn that one back on his head once more. But what's happening here is I Fate is going aggressive and not realizing he's gone for a, a damaging build here, which means he's going to be a lot squishier when he gets into these engagements. Not too much health on that his side, uh -huh. yes. And that Zeus is punishing level 19 in the process. Fire Giant less than 50% health. Genocide's jump is down, forced to use that ultimate defensively, also baiting out famous hate Meanwhile, Supernova. Meanwhile, left hand side as the Fire Giant is being done, Bastet takes a tier two tower for free. Fire Giant now at less than 50% health here. They're initiating on Quig though, who was looking to come in for a steal, and Quig's all alone here. Genocide's trying to cause some problems to slow them down to give Quig a window of escape, but famous hate denies that window with the Supernova. Iliara picking up final count on the left hand side, but he got what he came for, which was that tier two tower. He has the full penetration though with that crusher titan spade brawlers beatsick and yoden's wrath so these towers and phoenix is if left on very Chuck messy melted. very messy genocide is keeping them busy here fates on the way back in for the third time in a row we'll see if he survives this encounter he's gonna look for a kill this time on syndrome syndrome falls down and now he's just two damage dealers left Mango. to try and defend and Mango needs first to get in the there. fire giant he has the wrath he needs to get in there to steal it and national authority finds it with a wrath from and Mango. the damage from shaker gets him a double great ultimate for from him on the right hand side you can see genus had his one hit from death and benny q is running for his life has the valkyrie's discretion available looking to get some damage up on famous he eats it all with a disappearate forcing out the valkyrie's discretion now and there's the aegis in response but shaker's here he wants to be able to find the kill utilizing the chain lining he finds the detonate but only one stack two on one nowhere to go right hand side genocide falling to mango four members dead from first rounders and with soul in the mid lane this far up with the fire Ooh. giant this mid phoenix is in trouble. The Kraken comes off and Famous Hate will only just about live there. If Quick hit that in the middle, could have been a different story. But three members strong in mid. All damage dealers looking to bring down the Phoenix, waiting for the minions mainly. They will bring it down thanks to Shaker, Fine, OK, and Famous Hate. And on the front side of the other side, Mango goes straight in on Quick. And nothing really to deter him away. The Frostbind Hammer is going to be able to continue the pressure, finding the kill onto Quick, and more importantly, creating a distraction on the right-hand side. The Phoenix will fall. Second one down. Supernova this Time not the best will pick up the kill for famous hate again onto I face is now Shaker initiated up by Genocide, but he's not gonna hold a lot of damage here. In comes Giliara too, but the dance of Shaker is just good enough to allow time for Syndrome to get in and support. He got the knockup, he's gonna be able to get the sustain on top of this Genocide. Might have been off a little bit more that you could shoot the pull yet again right onto the right Genocide, place. but no one to really in position to follow that up. And it seemed that also the shell from Shaker that pick was picked up kept himself alive in the process. And now because of that, Astral Authority get two Phoenixes, can fall back towards the Gulf here. We find a red buff for themselves on the exit from the first rounder side of the map as well. Only one Phoenix remaining now for first rounders to defend. And as we said, trying to defend a siege is not going to be the easiest thing for the first rounders. Especially with a 15,000 goal lead for Astral Authority. Still Fire Giant on their belts for about two additional minutes. Makes it very difficult to hold on to. It's a level 18 Poseidon with Gem of Isolation. Go for a more of a utility style. Still has a decent amount of damage, but not that burst that you're really looking for out of your mid mage. Mango caught out of position there. Force of Eagles rally. Issa cracking in the ultimate from Fates too. Still trying to bring down Mango, but it's not enough damage. And they invested a lot of ultimates into that one for all intents and purposes. And that means they're going to be forced into an awful situation in the next defense. And this is what we were talking about. The utility style Poseidon versus damage burst. He ate the whole kit out of the Poseidon and still gets away for Scott Free. And Benny Q forced to ult as well against the Kitty Cats. All fine, okay. Means that all the ultimates are pretty much done. The big ones anyway. Anyway, they have Giliara's Nike ultimate. They have the Genocide ring, but is that going to be enough to stop the whole of Astral Authority diving in for the Phoenix? Left hand side, though, grouped up as Astral Authority. Still fire shine for another minute and 10 seconds. Not having to worry about that Kraken or the taunt from Ifates for a little bit longer. If they wanted to, they could still group up or they could just wait it out, go for the Gold Fury, try to get those six items online and get a very safe, guaranteed fire giant and continue on to round two. The 
first rounders have done very well the initiations. I think the rings have been fantastic. The dive in has been good. The problem is, is that they've not had much follow up to the damage on the front line because the back line is always running for their lives. It's just too much of an all in composition between yep. these three warriors. If they don't find the kills, then they can't basically peel for their back line. That's exactly what's been happening. Quig has been getting the, the worser end of things. And there was such a big level gap between him and Shaker earlier on in the game. And now he's going into this utility style Poseidon. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's going to be an awkward position because the three warriors and first rounders are in the bottom half of the damage charts, as you can see on the left hand side. But a good ring from Gina side will slow them down for now. They've not got a whole lot of damage. Sylvanas knocks them all up in the sky for a second or two there. And then the ultimate comes out one more time from Shaker. Famous hate picks up I face already. Giliara forced out, but pulled straight back in by Left Syndrome to give Shaker another kill and find OK. We'll clean up Giliara. That's the front line dead. It's Squishy's remaining. There's no Phoenix is standing. Astral Authority are looking to close this out in two. It's a great performance from Astral Authority being able to win this game faster than the last one. Now, they did lose Shaker in the process. They still have four more members. It's only quick to hold this one out. Titan is dropping, dropping, dropping really low. And that's going to be the second game for Astral Authority. They're going to advance to the finals and guarantee themselves at least 60 points. At least 60 points this week. And they get themselves 40 points from last week, which leaves them at 100 right now, minimum of yes. 100 points, which really puts them in that top three potential bracket here of the teams that are going to move on to relegations. But they've still got a final supply. Yes. And that's going to be the next one. Obviously, other things going on as well because third and fourth will place off for points as well. And we'll see how the standings look at the end of the day because it's been absolutely crazy between these these teams this week. And it's looked a little bit closer. Once you get down to the semi-finals, yes. you can really see the level difference. We saw Astral Authority play against Nightmare Asylum and Most Wanted. Those yeah. were a little bit pub stompy, I would say, for the most part. We saw the different levels of skill gap between them. But this one, despite first rounders losing in such an epic fashion, I would say in, towards the later stages mm. of the game, they were still holding their own in the earlier stages. First game, they had a relative well balanced out composition and then they tried to spice things up in the second game they by did. going for a more of an all-in style which made sense but it was just too difficult to really do anything against how Mango was able to control the early pace of the game. I mean, Mango's start of the game was fantastic for him, and he transitioned that into the later stages as well. This is quite early on, five minutes in, with the Eagle Rally that hit two, picks up quick, and then in the end, you know, we'll see him slip away. But Mango was just so instrumental on the rotation for the most part. The lead he developed against i Fates was enough for him to continue pressuring forward. That clip right there, this is where he found three early kills off of that rotation. He also found that solo kill in the second game against the Erlong Shen right off the bat, and that gave him such a huge lead to be able to continue the pressure anywhere he wanted. Solo lanes, for all intents purposes, though, are really strong over in North America. There's always talk about solo lanes is one of the hardest roles, and Mango's actually showing that he can he can perform it one of the highest levels. I feel. You I think he's, he's pushing himself into that. Now. It's all about respect versus de de uh, disrespect, rather. Mm. So Mango was not respected, I would say, in the solo laning phase. Obviously, Fates thought he was very comfortable playing the Erlong Shen. Generally, you are, but. Not against Mango, not this time around. Mango showed himself all the way through to the finals. Now we'll see what he can do in the finals as well. And we'll have a look at the brackets to see how they're looking right now. I'm not sure if we've got a result from whether Gabe has moved on to the finals again. Actually, no, they have. They defeated Captain Crunch in the semi-finals there. And it's going to be in memory of Gabe looking for a repeat performance of a win in week two to solidify themselves. But I can already guarantee it, in memory of Gabe will be in the relegations based off points they've earned so far. If we take a look at the point standings, we'll see where these teams lie up. But either way, this final should be a very epic set. Yeah, those points will be up after the finals for you all to see exactly how this will work out for everything there. But final thoughts, and we look at the finals now, Tolly, obviously it's going to be F. Dot and Agro bringing you them. But who do you think has it? Honestly, I haven't seen Memory of Gabe play today, That's so true. I can't really call it. But the way Astral Authority has been playing so far, Memory of Gabe has to watch out for them. Well, I'm predicting a 2-1 either way. We'll find out what happens in that, though, after the break.